Okay, so now let's talk about the actual absorption. We have digested our lipids, now we need to absorb them. And we're gonna have that same issue that we have talked about earlier with, when it comes to absorption, which is that there are two steps in the process of absorption. We have to first get across the luminal side of the enterocyte. Now we're inside our enterocyte cell in order to actually get into the body. We have to also then get across the basolateral side of the enterocyte. And the other thing that I wanna point out to you in this picture of a villus is that you'll notice that the villus has blood vessels in it which are represented in the blue and the red. And then additionally, the villus has a, lymph, uh, a lacteal in it, which is part of the lymphatic system that we're representing in green. Um, so that will become important as we're absorbing these lipids into our body. So let's talk about step one, absorption from the lumen into the enterocyte. So, um, so far I have been talking about the fatty acids that are going to be incorporated into the micelles after they have been digested. That's gonna be the majority of the fatty acids that are in our diet. Those are gonna be the longer chain fatty acids. So fatty acids that are, you know, 14, 16 carbons long or so are going to be incorporated into micelles. Um, and same thing with cholesterol. The cholesterol that we have, um, the, that has had its fatty acids cleaved off, so now it's just cholesterol, those will also be within these micelles. So the micelles are gonna come in nice close proximity to the enterocytes, and then they can just, uh, and then from there, the fatty acids can just diffuse directly across the enterocyte, um, and they will, diff they will uh, end up getting repackaged inside the enterocyte. We'll talk about that in the next step. So the fatty acids, the micelle will bring, will get in close proximity to the enterocyte, and then from there the fatty acids can directly diffuse. There's some research going on that there may be some other proteins involved, um, but it's still an area that's kind of under investigation. And then the next slide we'll talk about some specific proteins that are required for the absorption of cholesterol across the luminal side of the enterocyte. Now, when it comes to the shorter and medium chain fatty acids, they actually don't need to be uh, incorporated into my cells. So we will directly, um, we will directly absorb those shorter chain fatty acids um, right through the, the luminal side of the enterocyte. And so those would be for any fatty acids that are four carbons to 12 carbons long. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to absorb the sterols across the luminal side. So we have a few important transporter proteins. So the first important transporter protein is called Neiman Pick C1 like one protein. Great name, long name. Okay, NPC1L1. And so NPC1L1 is going to be living on the luminal side of our enterocyte. NPC1L1 can um, allows us to absorb cholesterol across the luminal side. Um, Phytosterols, which remember are the sterols that we get from plant foods. Phytosterols can also be absorbed through NPC1L1. And what's kind of interesting here is that cholesterol and phytosterols can compete with each other for absorption through NPC1L1. So that's getting in. Now, there's also some other proteins that um, are kind of, have kind of an interesting role in what we call cholesterol efflux. So that's kind of spitting cholesterol back out into the intestinal lumen. And so those protein, the cholesterol efflux proteins are called ABC, ABCG5 and ABCG8. That stands for ATP binding cassette G5, G8. So another great name. Um, and so what these compounds will do is they will spit sterols back out into the lumen. Specifically, ABCG5 and ABCG8, they will spit the majority of the phytosterols back out into the lumen. They'll spit some of the cholesterol back out into the lumen, and they, but they will spit most of the phytosterols back into the lumen. So overall, about 50 to 60% of the dietary cholesterol that you eat will actually get absorbed and stay inside the enterocyte um, without getting spit back out into into the lumen. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out in this slide is that there is a drug called azitamibe, and it is um, it inhibits the NPC1L1 transporter, um, and so it would prevent the absorption of cholesterol. So it is a drug that can lower um, blood cholesterol levels by inhibiting absorption of dietary cholesterol. 
Okay, so let's go to part two of the absorption. We have absorbed across the luminal side, now we need to absorb across the basolateral side in order to actually get into the body. So again, let's start talking about those short and medium chain fatty acids, those fatty acids that are four to 12 carbons long. They are going to just directly diffuse across the basolateral side and then directly into the portal circulation. So they're gonna go straight into the blood. They will go straight to the liver first before going out to the rest of the body or being held in the liver. But that's just for our short and medium chain fatty acids, which are really a very small proportion of the dietary fat that we're consuming. Most of the fat that we have consumed and absorbed from the micelle across the luminal side of the enterocyte, it's first going to get reformed into triglycerides. So that's what I'm showing you here. We've taken all those individual fatty acids and we have bound them to a glycerol backbone again so that we have these triglycerides. And these triglycerides and the cholesterol that we have absorbed are gonna get packaged into something that we call a lipoprotein. For now, think of it like a big water balloon that is just full of triglycerides and cholesterol that we absorb from our diet. And so this lipoprotein is called a chylomicron. And from there, the chylomicron, which is, you know, again, the big uh, water balloon full of triglyceride and cholesterol, the chylomicron can then just diffuse across the basolateral side of the enterocyte, but then it is gonna go into the lacteal. It's gonna enter into the lymphatics. And so what this is indicating to us is that the majority of the dietary fat that we are getting from our meal does not go straight to the liver. It's actually gonna go into the lymphatic system first.